Well, good morning to you. Thank you very much indeed for your company on a miserable, miserable uh, November day and heading into more misery through the festive period as well. As we know about a whole heap of different strikes, nurses going on strike, civil servants, postal workers, you name it. Of course, the one that's hitting an awful lot of people right now has been the railway strikes. Now, there have been some talk and some hope uh, that actually there was going to be a deal that would be done. But it doesn't look very likely now, as we had that announcement from the RMT General Secretary Mick Lynch yesterday, that there'd be no improved offer on jobs, paying conditions and more walkouts would go ahead. The dates for 40,000 staff from Network Rail and 14 train companies uh, to go on strike are the 13th and 14th of December for 48 hours, 16th and 17th of December, 3rd and 4th of January and the 6th and 7th of January. However, there'll be disruption on the days before and the days after, as we have seen in previous rail strikes. Uh, and of course, uh, there will also be a, a ban on overtime uh, throughout that period, which means, of course, there'll be far more disruption uh, throughout every single day and of course even if you never get the railways there'll be a massive impact on the roads and of course this could lead to massive hit on hospitality over Christmas and of course even more importantly a hit on people's first chance in three years to have a Christmas with their family. Well, let's talk about all of this with John Leach he's Assistant General Secretary of the RMT Union and joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining us. I mean, you know, Mick, Mick Lynch has been dubbed Mick Grinch uh, for ruining festive spirit for an awful lot of people who've had a miserable year, facing a miserable winter ahead, uh, two Christmases cancelled in 2020 and 2021, desperate to be with their families, and now they face the possibility they won't be able to get a train to visit their families and be with them over Christmas. Why are you doing this to us at this time? Well, the reality is all of those issues affect the 40,000 members of the RMT that will be taking this industrial action and have been since the summer. And all we're talking about is a fair deal. Nobody's had a pay rise for three years, and this would be the fourth year if we're going to next year. We're dealing with billions of pounds worth of cuts facing our industry. People's contracts are on the table, and we're just demanding a fair deal for our members. We you... thought on Monday that was coming our way. They cancelled a meeting with an hour's notice. Network Rail's uh, not made any revised offer. And we have to take our responsibilities very seriously to protect our members. So we've called the strikes. Let's hope this shakes the government into action because they're essentially the brokers here. Uh, my general secretary's meeting the secretary of state up tomorrow. And let's hope there's a light bulb moment when they switch themselves back on and get round the negotiating table and make us an offer that we can put to our members. But at the moment, we are facing going into the fourth year without a pay rights. We're dealing with billions of pounds worth of cuts, people's contracts being potentially uh, ripped up and thousands of job cuts in the railway industry. But hold on a minute, hold on a minute. We've got a rail industry that's completely changed. Now, not, not the fault of the rail unions or the rail workers, I completely understand. But a lot of industries have lost out. You know, a travel industry, uh, uh, the hospitality interest, retail, many others have been hit really badly by what's happened over the last few years. But the rail industry certainly has. The commuters, the ones that spend a fortune on those season tickets, travelling particularly, you know, in and out of London and Manchester and Liverpool, those, those people aren't travelling anymore. They're working from home. They're not paying for those uh, seats five days a week and therefore you've not got as much money coming in massive multi-billion pound bailouts to keep the industry keep the travel industry going uh, on the railways for the last few years um, and i'm afraid you know time has been called everyone would love a 15 percent plus pay rise which would actually mean that you know, for all intents and purposes just keeping you know keeping up with inflation but the reality is most people aren't that. going to get to it they're not going to get it if everyone got a 15 percent pay rise across the board none of us would be any better off because everything would then go up 15, by 15 percent to cover that talked about a 15 percent pay rise what we're talking about is a fair deal for our members they had a pay rise for three years the cost of living crisis the fuel bill that we all face and christmas affects them just like it does everyone else and the reality is they cannot tolerate a situation where we come out of the the uh, pandemic having kept the country moving which was the right thing to do. Well, you didn't really keep the country right moving. Trains were empty. Really. We kept the country moving. The 40,000 men and women who make up the railway, make up the RMT that will be on strike going forward, kept this country moving. They should be commended for that. Well, and I'm and sorry. Mo loads of us were going to work. Do. Loads of loads of us were going to work. They no. weren't under any bit. Sitting sitting in a train in a cabin doesn't put you at great risk of COVID. Yes. They weren't working Actually, on COVID it did. wards. It did. it did. We lost members in the pandemic, as other people as did. Have, yes, society. people lost people died in, in every walk of life. You, you can't work from home if you maintain tracks or work in a control room 
on the railway. Millions of people went out to work during the pandemic. We're a for our members and we are determined to get it. Okay. The government needs to get behind a settlement and we can do a deal. But if they don't, then we well, will defend ourselves. Well, listen, we spoke to Mel Stride, who's Cabinet Minister for our conventions earlier in the show, and he said, look, later through this week, there is going to be a meeting uh, between you and the Transport Secretary, Mark Harper. Of course, Grant Chap's always, you know, rather famously, when he was Transport Secretary, said, nothing to do with me, Gov. You, your argument from your union and other rail unions has always been, we can't negotiate with the train operating companies or Network Rail because ultimately they don't hold the purse strings. They're not going to sign off any deal. Is is kind of a waste of time unless the transport secretary is there rep or his representatives at the table is that still your view that there isn't really a proper negotiation without the government actually carrying it out well the government are in complete control of this situation from the point of view of the other side of the negotiating table you know they they cancelled a meeting on monday for, at the rail delivery group at the highest level and we're meeting them tomorrow thursday morning my general secretary will be meeting the secretary of state that can, that meeting, I hope, is productive. The government. Well, hold on a minute. Why did meeting. you have to? A meeting was cancelled, and now the meeting's been re-established for Thursday. Why did you have to announce a strike in between? We uh, we responded to the fact that we had suspended strike action to enable two weeks of intensive talks. We had those talks. No offer was made. We will not be pushed about in this dispute. Our members have been waiting for three to four years for a pay rise. We're not going through another P&O where people are sacked by email overnight. We're not going to allow our pensions and jobs to be cut. We will defend ourselves. Okay, but the, this, it's all, look, this, listen, John, it's wonderful fighting talk. The reality is the modernisation of the railways um, and the fact that there aren't as many people travelling on the railways and they can't, we can't afford it. Your members... Your mem the number of people working in the railways and and the the pay deals and the conditions they're going to get they are going to change. That's a reality. And that, lots of people will be you know perfectly supportive of your members trying to get extra extra pay. Well, it's not extra, but again to actually keep up with inflation. Lots of people are very very supportive of that and and understand that the difference is you have the power to hold the country to ransom. Millions of families are trying to actually uh, enjoy a family Christmas the first time in three years, and you're using that power for the benefit of your members but at the cost of millions and millions of families who probably aren't paid as much as many of your members i mean come on it's a lot of people are, you're going to lose a lot of support over doing this over the festive period well, we've got a lot of public support out there we i wonder how long it'll last we're holding, we're, we, re we reject the assertion we're holding anyone to run well, you are we're professional well, no we're not we're professional men and women who keep the trains moving who, de who deserve a proper pay rise and they deserve to be trapped properly, as does everyone else. This isn't a race. Well, let, again, but let's Working all have a pay rise of 15%. But the reality is the country doesn't you have the money. That. I don't know where you get that figure from. We've got to ask for that. Um, well, it's about it's about what people are predicting inflation to be. It was like like fifteen percent. Oh, right. so, so inflation is up, is is going to be at that figure. That's, well, that's what some of the predictions have been. Maybe years. maybe it'll stay what at eleven. We want is a fair deal for our members. Everyone in society is facing the same problems, including railway men and women, and we will stick together. But most the people don't have the power to have a strike that holds that puts so many other people's lives sort of damages their ability to get to work to see their families over Christmas. If you know, if Sainsbury's supermarket people, people like staff go, who by the way also work the whole way through the pandemic and had contact with customers, if they if they go on strike, people go, all right, I'll just go off to Lidl or I'll go off to uh, I'll go off to Tesco. So, but, but you can't, you don't have that option with the trains. So, okay, there are coaches and there are cars. Those aren't always an option for a lot of people. Yeah, but I mean, those other people you're referencing shouldn't be exploited either. They sh they deserve a proper pay. Your rate. members are being no, exploited. Not. People need a pay rise in this country, wherever they work, whatever sector they're in, supermarkets, the health service, education, the private sector, they're self-employed. Yeah. This cost of living crisis affects everyone and the railway men and women will stick okay. together until we get a fair deal. But you That's do understand that if, if everybody gets a pay rise, and I completely understand the urge for that, I mean, the idea is everyone should try and get a pay rise. However, if everyone gets one, that's going to put up the costs. Again, those ticket costs, that means inflation, that's an extra cost for someone. Uh, the supermarket workers, that will put up the cost of the, the, the goods we buy in the supermarkets. Every single thing we buy will go up by that 15% pay rise cost. And then we are 15% pay rise is eaten away by 15% inflation the economics of the situation are that this country could easily afford to settle these matters look at the okay. vast profits being made by the 
uh, uh, fuel companies and people like that. You need we need a fairer okay. system of distribution. People need to not be okay. turning heating off this winter. And that affects our members as well. All right. Really good to talk to you. Thank you very much. You're standing out there in the rain. Much appreciated. You're taking the time to talk to us. John Leach, Assistant General Secretary of the RMT Union. So I want to know what you think. Um, now our unions are set to ruin family Christmas for millions with their strike action next month. Bearing in mind that actually strike action so far has really hit commuters. Yeah, it's been some weekend strikes as well. I don't know about you. It's certainly affected a few of our family get-togethers in recent months. But does this change your view on striking rail workers? Are you angry now it's going to affect your Christmas, your family get-together, perhaps the first time in three years uh, tell us why maybe you don't change your view at all um do let us know you can tweet me at talk tv you can text the word talk then your message uh 287 uh, let's get some of the messages that have come through this morning Stuart says no uh it doesn't change my view because all jobs are important the cleaner on the trains in the ticket office the porters pushing around the hospital and the person serving you in a checkout of the supermarket people will moan, but we have ignored manual workers in this country and they are suffering oliver says nothing biased here then now rail unions are set to ruin family christmas for millions with their strike action next month well yeah but that that is what they're going to do that, that that's that's not bias it's a statement of fact isn't it martin says the media yet again turning this against the workers and not those at the top who are racking in all the profits and refusing to pay workers the increases they deserve it's okay when you work in a place where that doesn't exist um I'm, I'm not I'm not against people going on strike. I'm not against trade unions uh, trying to do a better deal for their uh, their staff. I have an issue with essential workers who are able to have more power because they are able to effectively hold the country to ransom. I do have an issue with that. Um, and I certainly agree that if uh, rich and operating companies are reaping profits, um, while, while we're subsidising to a tune of goodness knows how many tens of billions of pounds, the railways, and they're not paying railway workers uh, even the, the cost of living rise, um, yeah, I've got a very big issue with that. My issues with the strikes. Um, Pauline says, nope, I still 100% support the strikes. I blame the government for not acting in good faith. Only so much that people can take. Nicholas says, it would be brilliant if they were all made redundant just before Christmas. Never have I seen such a group of people that desperately need a reality check. Um, I don't want them all made redundant before Christmas. There wouldn't be any trains then either. Uh, Luke says, uh, I still got the same low opinion of them. And Mark says, I should point out, no strikes over Christmas are planned. Also, this can be sorted if the Department for Transport sat down and talked instead of cancelling meetings with 50 five minutes notice um can i just say if you're walking out on the 17th of december and the 3rd of january and you're doing a work to rule no overtime and your strike's going to hit like that actually that is going to affect an awful lot of family travel it really really is there will really barely any trains over that christmas period as it is um